بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Awesome says, I had this dream in October or November 2007. In this dream, I find myself standing in the confines of my own home. Abruptly, the world around me spiraled into darkness as heavy load shedding gripped the land, plunging us into a shroud of darkness. Persistent blackouts began to envelop our homes, leaving us in anguish. When at long last the electricity flickered back on, it was only for a short while before it would vanish again. Uneasiness settled over the people as they pondered, how can we live life like this? Then we discover that the electric generator units were broken. Worst yet, the coffers of the government lay empty, devoid of the funds needed for their repair. This was our chilling truth. This was to be our harsh reality for the rest of our lives. As days bled into nights, the lifestyle of the people took on a bleaker tone. Frustration seethed among the people, their lives strangled by the perpetual darkness. Then one night, I broke the silence of despair, saying, What's the point of this kind of life? It is as if we are living in an older era, devoid of electricity. I must venture out and search for the light. It is better to search for the light rather than sitting around. Under the shroud of night, I invoked the name of Allah and ventured out of my home, equipped with only a small torch. I embarked on a journey that would take me beyond the confines of the city, into the heart of the dark void that stretched endlessly before me. As I ventured deeper into the dark abyss, uncertainty gnawed at my resolve. I start thinking, which way should I go, as I couldn't understand anything, placing my faith solely in Allah. I chose a direction and asked Allah to lead me towards a place where there is light. After a long walk, my eyes finally beheld a distant glow. I saw a place lit with fire in the vast desolation. A rush of relief washed over me as I quickened my pace towards the source of the radiance. As I drew nearer, the illumination revealed an unusual towering structure, a colossal edifice which soared 15 to 20 stories high. Its form aglow with a mesmerizing dance of flames alit outside of its windows. I marveled at the phenomena before me, awestruck by its existence, for I had never before encountered or heard of such strange architecture. I say, well, it doesn't matter. All I needed was light, and so I entered the building. Upon entering the building, I found myself within a sprawling hall that bore semblance to a dining establishment and there were people inside, sitting and eating. Fiery lanterns adorned every corner, casting a delicate glow that bathed the surroundings in a warm, flickering light. Yet, an unfamiliar and unsettling aroma lingered in the air. I could see a counter there, and a staircase in the distance. As I walked towards the stairs, I didn't stare at anyone. However, a person walked by me, and I couldn't help but glance at him only to be seized by an overwhelming shock. The visage that met my eyes was otherworldly, far removed from any human appearance I had ever encountered. I say, who is this? This does not look like a human being to me. It bore a colossal head, small ears, and a scary face that sent chills down my spine. A chilling realization took a hold of me as I surveyed the room more closely. None of the occupants were humans. These beings were none other than the jinn, creatures of smokeless fire. I say to myself, Qasim, they only have lanterns of fire and it smells weird too. They must be jinn. Amid my astonishment, I couldn't help but wonder why the jinn paid no heed to me. Why didn't they seize me or forcibly expel me from their realm? Then I say, perhaps it was Allah's blessings that shielded me from their gaze as I left with my trust solely in Allah. Nonetheless, I climbed the stairs and reached the second floor. There I saw many rooms, and the jinns also inhabited this floor. I then go to the third floor, and finally reach the top floor. Along the way I encountered other jinns as well. Yet by the mercy of Allah, I remained concealed from their notice. Finally, I reached the top floor of the building. On the top floor, I saw a vast hall spread before me, and a small room guarded by giant, formidable jinns. 
This beckoned my curiosity. I said to myself, these jinns for sure have something valuable in that room. The jinn kind were bipedal. They walked upright on two legs. Their physical structure was very similar to a human's. However, some stark differences made them different from humankind. Their skin tones were in the shades of gray, of different hues of blue, greens, or other colors. They had an extraordinarily large face and jaw with smaller ears. Some had a regular body structure. However, the others, especially the guards, were more terrifying and had a stronger build and they wielded unique weapons unlike anything I had ever seen before. Perhaps these were the elites or the ifrits guarding the ring, but Allah knows best. I approached the room and slowly and cautiously opened the door and snuck inside. The interior of the room bathed in a soft glow of the lanterns. Inside the room, atop a table, rested a small box, its contents a mystery yet to be uncovered. I grasped the box and carefully exited that room and started to swiftly head back. As I crossed the threshold and left the building, a wave of happiness washed over me. The mercy of Allah had shielded me from the gaze of the jinn, otherwise the jinn would not have spared me. I tell myself that, at the very least, I have found something. Once again, I invoke the name of Allah to lead me to an even better place than before. I ask, O oh Allah, this time take me to an even better place than this. After a lengthy journey, I see in the distance an area illuminated by a brilliant, pristine light. Its radiance looked very bright to me. I hastened towards this breathtaking spectacle. Drawing near, my eyes beheld a grand building filled with light. I marveled at the majesty before me, my heart swelling with gratitude for Allah's benevolence. It was a place beyond imagination, a sanctuary of light and beauty. I say, Allah has truly heard my prayers and led me to a place beyond my imagination. Filled with anticipation, I confidently think to myself, no one will be able to see me within this building, and surely there must be a treasure on the top floor that I can take with me and leave this place. With these comforting thoughts, I enter the building. As I entered the building, an overwhelming sense of awe overcame me. The grandeur of the place was nothing short of immaculate, a testament to the impeccable craftsmanship and artistic detail that adorned every corner. It was a marvelous, beautiful place that touched my heart, adorned with decorations everywhere. In the distance, I spotted an elevator, and on my left-hand side, I saw a counter. I say, no one will be able to see me here, and I hastened towards the elevator, but someone from behind called me. They announced, Qasim, wait a moment. My steps stopped. I became shocked and froze on the spot. I say, I thought no one would be able to see me, and I would take the treasure and run from here, but someone has seen me, and he even knows my name. I had believed I would remain invisible, yet here was someone who not only saw me, but they knew my name. Doubt and fear clawed at my resolve. As I stood there, frozen in the face of this unexpected revelation, uncertain of the nature of the entity that called me, in that moment of uncertainty and fear, I turned around to face a presence that left me astonished. Before me stood Prophet Sulaiman salam, standing by the counter. I look at Sulaiman salam and become shocked thinking, what is Sulaiman salam doing here? Sulaiman salam asked me to come closer. He was wearing beautiful garments of unparalleled purity and flawlessness. When I gazed upon his face, his appearance left me mesmerized. I couldn't fathom that a being could possess such breathtaking beauty. My gaze was drawn to his face, and there it remained, frozen in admiration of Allah's creation. Every aspect of him was perfect, from his features to his chromacity, and his dark graceful hair which appeared as if water would flow from it. His eyes held the depth that seemed to contain the entire world's pure waters. Sulaiman salam inquired about the box I held saying, Qasim, where did you get that box from? As he spoke, I witnessed roses, pearls, and other flower petals 
coming out of his mouth. I shared the tale of my journey. I tell him this box was in a building that was lit by fire, and I felt as if the jinns lived there. Suleiman asked me in a shocking tone, Did the jinns not see you? I say, No, they did not see me. And I was surprised too, but Allah protected me by His mercy. Suleiman affirmed, No doubt Allah is the best of protector. I kept gazing upon Suleiman and reflecting about Allah's creation. I thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth in six days and six nights. Suleiman must have been created in a century. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made everything in Suleiman perfect with no flaws left in him. I contemplated that all of Allah's prophets are pure and if Prophet Suleiman salam's beauty was this beautiful, Assalamu then imagine alaykum, divine news the beauty of Prophet Muhammad This dream in October or November 2017. Suleiman I am then just cut some part of that dream because it's a box, very long dream and so but give me the box. beautiful dream it of Muhammad Qasim. I am I shall return it back from where witness. you got it. Those jinns dwelling there are extremely Everyone becomes evil. worried that if how can that we live like missing, they will pursue you Everyone becomes worried that how can we live like them, they will not leave you alone. Everyone becomes Concerned worried that how can we live life like that. Open the box then we found out the electric generator units Suleiman are broken and the government doesn't have money to repair the them. So this is how rest of life will be. With a sense of relief, this is how death passed by very well. and if you deem it the lifestyle becomes so worse and worse. Salam People says, become more and more frustrated. Then one night I say what's the point of Qasim, this kind of life? It's Come living like an old era. There I said with where was no right, presence of electric city. As Suleiman salam departed, I was left there where there was no presence of electric city. I said that I, said, I should go. No doubt, all of Allah's prophets are pure. My heart fills with joy after meeting Suleiman salam. Instead of going to the top of the building, I head on home. On the way where back, there was I no presence of electric city. So I said that I should go out and tomorrow. search for light better than sitting around is to search for light. In size, and it appeared to be I say the name of Allah and leave home the head of the in the darkness the of large, the night. Shiny red I say with no inscriptions written I only have a small torch of light with me. I walk and walk home, until I leave the city. I only see How darkness I everywhere. I start thinking that which way I should go amends, because I could not understand anything. Anticipating my then with then putting faith in Allah I choose a and path and I ask return, Allah I, I to take me to a place myself. where there is light. As dawn broke, After a very long walk I see a place lit out with, with fire. My heart I become happy that at Allah least I saw light. Once more. I start Arriving walking fast building, towards it. I headed straight for the when I came but to close it, I see to be found. it's a 15 to 20 story building. Me, as I that, that building was he had shining with fire. Morning, I become very amazed and say, I yeah, have never before heard of However, this kind of building or seen there. it. He inquired, I say, well, me, it doesn't matter. All I need I was light. I go inside the building. Was for inside was a the huge asked, hall. This building looking awesome. like some I restaurant said, type yes, and the people awesome. were sitting the man and says, eating. Wait, inside were fire electrons everywhere for lighting. He there was a strange smell so everywhere. Give this letter I could see a counter the there and stairs in the distance far away. I start going towards the stairs. While going towards the stairs, I don't stare at anyone. When I'm walking, a person walks by. I look at him and become shocked. I say, who is this? This doesn't look like a human being to me. His head was huge. His face 
was weird and scary. A boundless amount of electricity. Then I looked generated at everyone else closely and noticed these are not humans. These are all scary looking. I have never seen these kind of beings before. As I cast him, they only have fire lit and it smells weird too. The they must be jinns. Offering a glimmer of I say if they are jinns, then how come they didn't look at me and grab me and kick me out the door? Then I say maybe Allah's blessing is lie with me. And that's why they didn't see me because I left with my trust in Allah. I burned the letter. I could quickly go up the stairs and reach the second floor. I quickly go up the stairs and reach the second floor. There were rooms. There are uh, there. There were rooms and there. There were rooms there and jinns are also there. Then I go to the third floor and then finally the top floor. I see jinns there too, but. By the mercy of Allah, no jinn see me. On the top floor, there's a huge hall and a small room in the hall, and there's a big jinn guarding it. I said to my these jinn for sure have something valuable in that room. I go close to the room and slowly open the door and get inside. 